<clears throat> so let's use this law uh, in an actual example problem. A 1.25 gram sample of CO2 is contained in a 750 milliliter flask at 22.5 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure of the gas? Now here's the thing about ideal gas law problems. They look very different from every other problem. And the reason for it is, notice that in all the other problems we've done so far, we've always had two sets of conditions, a P1 and a P2, a V1 and a V2. But in ideal gas law, we only have one set of conditions, meaning nothing changes. This is where it is at now, not where is it going to be in 10 minutes. Okay. Now, because we're doing a calculation problem, the first thing you should always do is write down your formula. <clears throat> Fill in what you know, or write down what you know. My P is what I'm looking for, because it says, what is the pressure? The volume is 750 milliliters. Now, I just told you that we don't want to work in milliliters, we want to work in liters. So the first thing we're going to do is divide by 1,000 and get 0.75 liters. My moles. Now, do I have moles? No. I don't have moles anywhere in the problem. It doesn't say this many moles of carbon dioxide, but it does tell me that I've got 1.25 grams. So I'm going to do a quick mole conversion. I'm working with CO2. One mole goes on the top because I'm converting two moles, and the weight from the periodic table for carbon dioxide is on the bottom, which is 44.01 grams. Pull out my handy-dandy calculator. 1.25 divided by 44.01, and I get 0 0.0284. Now, sig figs are not important here because it's not my final answer. So I'm going to write three sig figs, but I don't actually have to keep three sig figs when it's all done. I'll reevaluate the sig figs at the very end. And then lastly is my temperature. And my temperature is 22.5 degrees Celsius, but of course we have to convert to Kelvin by adding 273. So I get 295.5 kelvins. Plug everything into the formula. P is what I'm solving for. My V is 0 0.7500. My N is 0 0.0284. My R is 0 0.0821 because that's always going to be the same value. And my T is 295.5. Now here's the thing about these problems that people get stuck on, and this is a great way to mess up. You have to kind of plan out how you're doing the problem in your head before you actually go and solve it. Ideally, you want to be able to do the temperature calculation uh, in your head. You don't want to have to pull out a calculator to do that. But even if you do, it's okay, but try to make the mole conversion the last one, last calculation you put into the calculator because you want that number to be on the calculator screen when you go to do the next step so that you don't have to rewrite or retype anything. Remember, every time you type, touch the calculator, you increase the chance for making a mistake. So you want to reduce down, down those mistakes as much, as much as possible. So I hit times. It's got my moles already in there. 0 0.0821 times 295.5. Enter, divide by the volume, 0.75, and I get 0.91875, blah, 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 blah. Atmospheres. But obviously, that's not my final answer because I have to put in the correct number of sig figs. So I go back to my original givens. I have three sig figs in the mass. I have four sig figs in the volume, and of course I don't look at the degrees Celsius for sig figs, I look at the Kelvins, which are 295.5, which is four sig figs, so my fewest number of sig figs is the mass, which is three, so this becomes 0.919 atmospheres.